Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yudita Rikomadar, country representative for Europe South Japan. A very warm welcome to those of you who are connecting to us at this time, and a special welcome to our speaker today, Enrico Traversa, Science and Technology Councillor, Embassy of Italy in Japan. A very warm welcome, and this is actually a Meet Your Science coffee event. So those of you who are having a little break in your um, work, you're welcome to sip a little bit of coffee or tea with us today. In this uh, interview Thank session. Thank you very much, Judith. Thank you very much for inviting me in, uh, in joining this uh, uh, conversation uh, on uh, around the coffee or cup of tea in my case. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so let us jump right into the middle of it. The first question, first and foremost, how did your professional development lead you to become a science diplomat? So what was your educational career path that brought you to your current position? Well, actually, um, the position of scientific counselor in Italy is different from uh, the other embassies. I mean, usually, uh, in uh, in the other embassies, except I would say from France and a very few others, are uh, the position is is a, a diplomatic position. While uh, in the case of Italy, the position is uh, uh, for experts. So I'm a researcher. I'm not a diplomat. And so I arrived at uh, uh, a disposition just uh, doing a, a research and academic career. So I, uh, I, I got a degree in uh, chemical engineering, and then I started to, to work on uh, basically on material science, material science and technology. And I had a quite uh, unusually rapid career. I was an uh, associate professor when I was 30 years old and then full professor when, when I was 39 years old at the University of Rome Tor Vergata. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, I, I basically uh, worked in Italy uh, until I, uh, I mean, the, the research money, research funds were run out. So I, uh, I was obliged to move from Italy if I wanted to continue to do research. And I uh, was luckily, uh, lucky enough to, to get a position in, in Japan from 2009 to 2012. Uh, lucky in, uh, enough because uh, uh, I'm here because a lot of my uh, research, uh, scientific uh, research and career uh, has been linked to Japan. So the first time that I uh, came to Japan was in 92, and I was uh, three months at the University of Tokyo at the Research Center for Advanced Science and Technology. Then uh, I will, uh, I was, uh, uh, I mean, again in Japan in 96 for six months with the uh, grant of the European New uh, and uh, uh, and then again, I mean, I I, I, I had a joint laboratory, uh, a joint laboratory always at the University of Tokyo, sponsored by uh, uh, the Italian Minister of Foreign Affairs. And finally, in two thousand nine, I landed at uh, in, in the WPI Mana as a principal investigator at uh, at NIMS in Tsukuba. So uh, my research career and has been linked to Japan uh, significantly, and this is why I'm here. I mean, uh, as I said, the position of scientific counselors for Italy are given to experts, and I, uh, I mean, I applied for uh, uh, for the position position in Japan. I didn't apply for any other countries. I mean, even uh, though my career is also, I mean, I, I used to work also in Saudi Arabia and in China, and I had lots of collaboration with uh, uh, many other countries, United States, UK, uh, uh, Thailand, Brazil. Uh, I wanted to be, uh, to, to have this role in Japan. 
because I think that it's the country that I know better. And uh, so my target, my goal was not to become a scientific counselor, but becoming a scientific counselor in Tokyo. That was my focus. <clears throat> So basically, I arrived here uh, through my connections with uh, my uh, connection with Japan. That were, I mean, first uh, as uh, collaborating, I have very collaboration, as I said, with the University of Tokyo, but also with uh, the Ehime University in Matsuyama. I had uh, a very long collaboration for thirty years with Professor Yoshihiko Sadaoka. And also I had other collaboration with uh, Nagasaki University uh, and um, uh, Tsukuba and, and so on. So uh, this uh, knowledge of the research world in Japan, and then it was increased during my stay as, a, as I mean, as a, a Japanese researcher while I was in, uh, in WPI MANA. Uh, that was led me uh, finally to, to the position of scientific counselor of the embassy uh, of Italy in Tokyo. Thank you so much for the very extensive explanation. And uh, indeed, you have a very, very interesting trajectory, Saudi Arabia, China, and uh, finally Japan. So let's hear more about what's your favorite memory working in science diplomacy. Uh... Might be a tough one. Um, I think that the, the very nice memories, a recent one during the G7, because uh, uh, this year the G7 organized by Japan was very hectic, and there were many meetings all together, especially during the weekend, uh, where uh, there were uh, the, the science uh, and the G7 and the G7 for education. There were also the G7 for health and G7 for finance. So this combination um, of many ministers present in, in Japan and the embassy that uh, the, the staff, the diplomatic staff in, in, in the embassy of Italy is not that uh, numerous. So th this series of the events and combination uh, led me, uh, let me uh, become uh, head of delegation during the G7 education for the last day. So for uh, one day I played as a minister, uh, being the head of the acting head of delegation. I was the minister for the day and when I had uh, uh, all the advantages and the honors given to the ministers, but without having the, the troubles and the, and and the, 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 any need for taking responsibilities. So that was really, really uh, a special event, I think, and a, a unique occasion that will never happen again in my life. I, I am sure about that. And so that that was uh, very, very nice. I mean, I had the very nice time with the, with the fantastic dinner in the Kanazawa Castle with uh, uh, Minister Nagaoka and uh, the, the, the and, and I mean the, the mayor of Kanazawa, uh, the, the 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 president of Ishigaki uh, Prefecture. Uh, so it was really nice. <laughs> that was. Yeah, that sounds quite a, a memorable uh, occasion, I would say. And uh, yes, I, I would agree with you. It's a once in a opportunity. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, was, that's, I mean, a unique <laughs> uh, event and that's why it's particularly memorable. Of course, I have also other uh, nice uh, uh, events. I mean, nice interactions with uh, Italian researchers in, uh, uh, here in, in Japan, in Tokyo. And so it has been a very nice experience. Thank you so much. Uh, even though I mean, this kept me uh, away from research, I mean, I, of course, I it, during this uh, last uh, six years, I, I I didn't completely stop my research, but it's it's very much reduced. Uh, I don't regret that. I mean, I, I think that the, the the experience was really worth uh, uh, doing. I mean. Uh, I'm 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 happy overall <laughs> about the choices that I made. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. So the next question is kind of similar. What's the role of your embassy in Japan in promoting science and technology partnerships and developments? Obviously, you have met um, very um, high flying officials, bureaucrats, researchers in Japan. So you must have quite a wide network. Uh, yes, uh, I was particularly lucky because, as, as I uh, as I said, I mean my uh, history with Japan was quite long. So when I arrived, for instance, my uh, former boss at uh, at, at NIMS, uh, Professor Teru Kishi, was the scientific uh, counselor of the ministry, uh, ministry uh, minister of foreign affairs here in Japan. So, and not only him, I mean, I had uh, the, the, I mean, the, the privilege of uh, already <clears throat> knowing personally and in some cases being also friends with uh, uh, some of the uh, prominent uh, uh, sci uh, scientists in Japan that were uh, doing, uh, I mean, now managing activities. So that was really um, a plus for me. I mean, uh, that was, uh, I was having uh, a privileged access to given people. So uh, this was extremely important at the beginning of my <clears throat> duty because uh, I was back <clears throat> in Japan after um, a break of about four or five years. So I, I, I didn't come to Japan uh, <clears throat> often the, the three or four years uh, uh, before my uh, the start, of my, the, the start of my work in, uh, in, in at the embassy in Tokyo. So first thing I had to reconnect. I mean, uh, I, I knew the history, but four or five years are a lot, especially in, in research, many things can happen. And many things happened in Japan. So uh, first, uh, the first, first thing that I did was uh, trying to reconnect with uh, the Japan that I knew and fill the gap of the years uh, uh, that, that I miss Japan uh, in order to uh, discover the, 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 the actual Japan, the, 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 the real-time Japan. And that's, I mean, uh, the, the help of knowing many of the key persons in, uh, in uh, Japanese management of research and science uh, was extremely uh, helpful for me. I mean, uh, I, I, I Got, I, I was able to fill the gap in a, a rather a short time. So uh, then, I mean, uh, what I the, 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 what I found, I mean, the situation that uh, uh, that I found basically uh, um, is that was that uh, there were not um, um, how to say structured collaborations between Japan and, and Italy. So not so uh, many. Uh, possibilities of funding for bilateral uh, projects, bilateral collaborations. So uh, what I tried to do in these uh, years uh, uh, was uh, uh, trying to uh, overcome the problem. So trying to uh, find a way of uh, uh, establishing bilateral uh, projects uh, uh, discuss with uh, JST and AMED and with the respective uh, uh, agencies in Italy. And uh, we were able to, to uh, I mean, have also um, engagement from uh, Italian agencies to, uh, I mean, to uh, invest funds in uh, uh, Japan-Italy collaborations. Unfortunately, that was the, the timing was not really good because now Japan has uh, changed a little bit uh, uh, his policies with for international collaborations, and so recently they are uh, making the before the AD Corp and now Aspire project, which is on a multilateral basis. I mean, not really multilateral, but uh, so that the Japanese researcher can. Uh, ask uh, for collaboration with uh, people of several countries, not only a specific country. And uh, uh, so um, in, in, in this way, uh, there is a basically competition, Japanese competition 
so uh, for instance the result of ad corp was that uh, uh, on seven projects uh, assigned by JST, uh, six projects were given to collaboration with US and one with UK. So unfortunately, any project with uh, Italian was selected. So uh, there were the, 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 the budget available for the winners from the Italian side that could not be used because there were no winners. So uh, I think that the next step We'll be trying to, uh, I mean, find a way of uh, having real bilateral collaboration. So, in, in, in the way that uh, funds can be used by both sides and, uh, and avoiding that, that this uh, money would be used uh, uh, for other, other collaborations for other countries. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so, I think... I mean, uh, yes, go ahead. No, 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 it's fine. Uh, yes, I actually often hear that funding is a huge, um, huge uh, problem. So what kind of tools and mechanisms are available to facilitate collaborations um, and uh, exchange of researches that might require um, minimal funding? And I was wondering how much actually are these MSCA uh, staff exchange uh, grants are utilized, or do you happen to know of any successful collaborations that uh, used Horizon Europe funds? Um, well, I mean, um, there are a lot of collaborations on uh, on personal levels between Italian and Japanese researchers. And uh, the, the, the problem is that uh, uh, the funding uh, is not uh, available. So at, at the moment, the only funds available are uh, based on the protocol between uh, uh, the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, uh, and the MOFA in, uh, in, in Japan. Uh, the problem is that the, the, for this uh, protocol, the, the budget is also given to the Italian side. Uh, so there's no budget from Japanese side. And uh, um, given this, and, and the budget is not is not particularly large. Uh, so uh, eleven projects are funded every three years. I mean that was happened. What that was happening in the last uh, three. I mean ten years, I would say. Uh, and uh, so, but. Uh, 11 projects were uh, supported, but the applications were 200. Uh, so uh, success rate is very small. Indeed, and, that sounds uh, like it. And, and, but, but this demonstrated that there are a lot of potential for uh, uh, collaboration between Italian and Japan. I mean, there's uh, uh, many people chances. So uh, during my stay, I uh, created, and unfortunately, just before COVID, uh, uh, a small uh, grant given directly by the embassy that, that uh, we called uh, Japan Meets Italian Scientist. There was, a, a, I mean, a sort of seed grant for uh, supporting short visits uh, of about a week. Uh, but uh, for people that uh, were keen uh, I mean uh, incentivate uh, that and, and to demonstrate that the, the, the interest is, was also on the Japanese side uh, um, co-finance and some, some co-financing from the Japanese side, which was not mandatory, but uh, I mean, of course, was a kind of uh, I mean, help in uh, in getting the the, the funds from uh, uh, from from the embassy. That was quite successful the, in 2019 because we were planning to support uh, three exchanges, and then we uh, we were able to uh, thank to the. Um, thanks to the uh, support also from the Japanese side, we were able to uh, award uh, seven uh, visits. 
uh, unfortunately, uh, only two were made before COVID. Uh, other three were, other, other four were made later. Uh, one probably will not happen, uh, unfortunately. And then we repeated the call in, to, in uh, last year. And so uh, again, last year uh, we supported, I think, eight people for uh, for the and 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 now some some people is uh, just uh, uh, I mean. that uh, in, uh, we think we thought to to uh, establish in order to um, give some possibilities with uh, a limited amount of money uh, for promoting the interactions with the, between uh, Italian and Japanese researchers. Yes, I, I think it's uh, especially important to have reciprocity in the numbers, uh, what we actually see with the Horizon Europe grants is that more European researchers would like to come to Japan than the Japanese uh, researchers who are available uh, to actually travel to, to Europe. Yeah. But this is a general problem. It's not only, I mean, the Japanese now do not like to, to go abroad. Uh, it's it's much more difficult now. Uh, if there were there was always an interest at the uh, researcher level, uh, so for instance, during my career, I hosted uh, several uh, um, professors or researchers uh, in uh, in my laboratories in in, in Rome. Um, I was able to uh, to receive only one student. And uh, and now the situation is even worse for the students. Uh, the, 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 they don't like to they don't like to to to, to go abroad because I mean there are lots of uh, uh, structural problems. Let's say in a, from Japan side, uh, the, the the students are not incentivated in uh, in, in in going abroad because. Uh, uh, they do not have any advantage from uh, um, finding a job later if they have uh, an international experience. On the contrary, sometimes they are uh, they have trouble. They may have trouble because uh, uh, usually uh, when it, it would be the, the right time <clears throat> for students to go abroad, the Japanese students are very busy in getting their job for the future. So uh, if they miss the opportunity, uh, they will miss. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's I mean it, it's really missed. <laughs> so they uh, they don't like to go <clears throat> abroad for these reasons. Uh, on the other hand, also uh, from PhD students now, the number of PhD students in uh, in Japan is. Uh, uh, very much reduced because uh, there's no attraction again uh, for them in in going to a PhD course if they think at the, in finding a job. The positions <clears throat> for researchers are very much reduced in Japan now, and especially they are not uh, permanent. So there is a lot of uncertainty for the the Japanese uh, uh, people if they want to continue to do research. And they do not have many opportunities, uh, and so now we are also uh, seeing that uh, many young, uh, promising guys are uh, going to work abroad as researchers, and so they're leaving Japan, uh, and I mean, in a sort of uh, brain drain, which uh, which is uh, something unusual for Japanese. I mean, that, that, that's uh, the, still the numbers are not very large, but the trend is uh, significantly increasing. Uh, that, that should worry Jap Japan, uh, I believe. So <clears throat> uh, these are uh, a series of factors that uh, uh, if they are not going to be changed, uh, that, that will, uh, I think, cause uh, severe problems to the, for the future of Japanese research. Yes, absolutely. I think you have uh, summarized perfectly the situation on the ground 
indeed uh, undergrad students for those uh, uh, viewers who are not familiar with the Japanese situation. So university students are actually required to do job search during their third and fourth years. And this is a very strenuous process. There are several rounds for them to, to find a suitable job. And then if um, they do not get an offer by the end of their fourth year, chances are they will actually never land a full-time position, which in Japan is seen as especially detrimental to their career development in the future. As for PhD students, uh, the number of, of research uh, places, labs that can actually employ um, PhD students are very limited. And uh, for that reason, again, for job security reasons, students tend not to opt uh, to follow this career path. So, yeah, thank you for summarizing the, the gist yes, of that. We have. Well, I, I, can, I can add some numbers that were really surprising uh, to me that the University of Tokyo, uh, the uh, percentage of foreign students and undergrad level is. Uh, something uh, around uh, uh, 30 percent at the master level it's about uh, 20 percent at phd level 70 percent uh, it's not exactly i mean i don't remember the exact figures but uh, more or less this is the trend uh, so the, the 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 surprisingly the percentage of, of uh, phd students at todai at the university of tokyo is extremely large so that means that the Japanese guys do not go for the PhD because if they do not go to uh, University of Yes, we still have time for one last question. So what would you recommend to a young person in the early stages of his or her education or job? a career who would like to get more involved in science diplomacy and in science policy in general? Well, yes, this is a difficult question for me because I, as I said, I'm not a diplomat, so I, I followed a, a different path. So for, for Italian guys, uh, uh, the, the answer would be different than for uh, uh, other people, uh, for people from other countries uh, since, uh, until now, I mean, still is this is the the, the rule in uh, in Italy is that uh, the scientific council are researchers, so they're experts. So uh, in my case, I, I got uh, knowledge of the specific country, and with uh, with a good uh, I mean performance in in research, uh, I became qualified for becoming. Uh, um, uh, scientific council in Japan. So uh, for, an, for an Italian guy, uh, I, I would say if they're interested in a specific country, if they want them to become a scientific counselor there, they should follow their own research career in a proper way because they, they should become a, 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 good, a good scientist because uh, they will be evaluated also for their scientific performance. And then, uh, of course, the knowledge of the specific country, of the research in a specific country, it becomes the plus that will make uh, uh, specific people suitable for the uh, position in, in that given country. Of course, I mean, uh, if the, the, the path would be diplomatic, uh, uh, I don't know exactly, of course, because uh, it's, uh, it, it's completely different. Uh, 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 career path, so um, uh, I, I cannot really comment on that uh, in with uh, with, I mean, uh, with the enough knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you for the very extensive explanation of your career, the Italian researchers' uh, situation here in Japan, and also opportunities uh, for Japanese researchers in Europe, and uh, a recap of. Uh, basically opportunities and the numbers of uh, exchanges in general. I would like to ask our audience to tune in to future webinars on these subjects as well. I would like to thank Enrico Traversa, again, Science Councillor at the Embassy of Italy in Japan to have joined today's event, our attendees, and would like to ask you to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, line and facebook 
Thank you so much for coming today. And we are looking forward to seeing you next time as well. And a happy Thank coffee. you very much, you did it. Thank, Thank you. So you. Have a great bye day. Bye bye.